Ah, Day of Reckoning 2. I've put this one off for quite some time, haven't I? I covered the original Day of Reckoning by capturing the footage from my old GameCube using my original disc, and I wanted to do the same for the sequel, even using my old game save that somehow survived all these years later, but I didn't get around to doing it and my GameCube still packed away, so I'm just gonna cheat and use an emulator here. I'm sure you guys won't mind anyway. Day of Reckoning 2 came out in August 2005 in the United States and a month later in Europe, a few months before Smackdown vs Raw 2006 on PlayStation 2. The game was developed by Ux and published by THQ. Day of Reckoning 1 was a huge upgrade from previous GameCube WWF games, WrestleMania 18 and WrestleMania 19, and Day of Reckoning 2 makes further improvements to give fans what I feel is the ultimate WWE experience on the Nintendo GameCube. This is one I have a ton of experience with, I played this game more than any other GameCube wrestling game, and I actually prefer it over the PS2 games at the time. It doesn't have many of the bells and whistles you'll find in a Smackdown vs Raw game, but it does perfect the unique gameplay introduced all the way back in WrestleMania 18, and visually, it's in a completely different league. It really does give us a fine example of how developers improved throughout a console's lifespan. Day of Reckoning 2 is one of those if you know you know kind of games. No mercy and here comes the pain seems to get all the adulation, but every now and then an absolute hero will bring up Day of Reckoning 2 as one of the best games of this generation and I agree. There's a whole lot of fun to be had with this one and it gave fans an alternative to the PS2 games. Let's check it out then, this is Day of Reckoning 2. Presentation has been vastly improved in Day of Reckoning 2 when compared to its predecessor. The menu system takes you around the THQ arena where you see fans filing in for another WWE event. Go into options and you'll get taken to the production truck and go to the WWE shop and you'll visit the merch stand. You've also got a tutorial, create a superstar, story mode and exhibitions. All very straightforward but we'll take a look at these modes in a moment. Day of Reckoning 2, just like Day of Reckoning 1, truly shines in gameplay. THQ's Kendall Boyd talked about how the Day of Reckoning games were wrestling simulation games, whereas the Smackdown vs Raw series was much quicker and much more fast paced. And he also said the developers wanted to capture the feel of a Nintendo 64 wrestling game with Day of Reckoning 1 and 2. You'll definitely get reminded of the glory days when you play a few matches. Let's jump in and do a basic walkthrough of the controls. The B button is your strike button, tap it to perform a light strike and hold it in to do a hard strike. You can change these up too by holding in a direction on the control stick. Grapples work the same way, tap the A button for a light grapple, hold in the A button to lock up and perform a hard grapple. You can also perform strikes while in the grapple state. You'll use the trigger buttons to counter moves, you've got an action button to pick up weapons, you've got a run button, and that's all you need to know to get started. If we look down here, you'll notice that Day of Reckoning 2 added a stamina meter. Deplete this and you're gonna slow down to a standstill and leave yourself open for attacks. We also have limb damage, we all know how that works. The momentum meter is just like the N64 wrestling game Spirit Meter, where the coloured indicators are gonna change from blue to red, red being maximum momentum. And then you've got your saved special states, you can save up to 3 at a time. Tap the A and B buttons together and you'll go into the special state and from here you'll be able to pull off as many special moves as you can within a limited time frame. If your momentum goes to the blue state, you'll get a chance to perform a momentum shift. This can be done once per match and it'll swap your momentum with your opponent. That can be a game changer sometimes. Submissions have been changed this time around. When you pull off a submission, you can choose if you want to boost your stamina with a rest hold, add to your special meter with a taunt, drain your opponent's stamina meter, or go for a straight submission. If your opponent makes the same selection that you do, then the submission move will get countered. I'm pretty sure this same submission system got added to the following year's Smackdown vs Raw, but don't quote me on that, I'm sure someone in the comments will confirm it. In terms of controls and what you need to get started, there isn't much else you need to know, but you can go out and learn more about how to play the game in the tutorial, this is actually quite in depth. 
Going back to what Kendall Boyd said in regards to making Day of Reckoning 1 and 2 feel like N64 wrestling games, you do get reminded of the classic 64 games when playing DOR. With the momentum meter, the special states, the limited time to pull off special moves, the light and heart attacks with button taps and presses, it definitely keeps a lot of what made the N64 games so good, but I certainly wouldn't say it plays like WCW Revenge or WWF No Mercy. The best way to describe it, I think, is a sort of mix between the SmackDown games and the Aki N64 games, and this isn't a bad thing either. It's almost like a more modern take on the Aki engine that's been given a ton of polish. Don't be fooled though, if you're expecting No Mercy 2 here, then you're not going to get it. Day of Reckoning 1 and 2 have their own play style, and just because you were a champion at No Mercy doesn't mean you're going to pick up Day of Reckoning 2 and breeze through it. There's pros and cons to Day of Reckoning when compared to the Aki games, and I don't think they should be directly compared to each other. Day of Reckoning 2 matches play very well though, you can take your time and put on long matches, where the damage you do or the damage you take will slow the match down in later stages. You can get to a point where both you and your opponent are so beaten up that neither player can get an advantage, and it turns into a complete kickout fest. You can also try to steal quick victories and surprise your opponent in the early stages of a match. There's a ton of variety in the general gameplay, and it's in the general gameplay where Day of Reckoning 2 deserves recognition. Just don't go into it thinking it's going to be like an Aki game, it has similar mechanics, it borrows a lot of ideas from the N64 games, and you do get reminded of those games when playing, but they are not the same. Presentation and graphics have gotten such a big upgrade in Day of Reckoning 2 that sometimes you're kind of shocked that this is a GameCube game, it looks excellent. This is upscaled with the Dolphin emulator though so do keep that in mind. Matches inside the ring look great with the big character models and zoomed in camera angle, and you can even flip the hard camera around so you get a nice view of the entranceways, I would usually do this straight away. There's also a kinda isometric view available if you want to try something totally different. Entrances too look good, the characters do have those kinda unnatural walk animations sometimes depending on who you select, but let's take a moment to remember what entrances looked like back in Wrestlemania 18 on the Gamecube. Oh that's fucking rough. With the upscaling going on in Dolphin, entrances become great opportunities for insanely good looking screenshots. And I know, anyone who plays the game isn't going to care much about this and only someone like myself taking clips and photos is going to pay attention, but seriously, Day of Reckoning 2 is so photogenic. Putting some of these screenshots beside a WWE 2K game shows us just how good Day of Reckoning 2 actually looked, or how bad of a job 2K did with their recent games, but yeah. Day of Reckoning 2's graphics and match presentation is one of the things that make the game stand out for sure. I was surprised how good it looked upscaled to 1080p, and when you add in the gameplay that's unquestionably a change from the more popular WWE games most people played during this era, then you end up with a very fun and unique wrestling game that still holds up very well today. I didn't want to put it down when I started recording this video. That's not to say there isn't some problems with the presentation and visuals either though. The WWE logo being mirrored on some of the turnbuckles is a little annoying, and members of the audience have been copy pasted quite a few times, but you'll quickly ignore these things when actually playing a game. So what we have here is a ruthless aggression roster, there's 43 superstars in total, including unlockable legends Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, Mankind, Steve Austin and The Rock. The roster's okay, not gonna say it's the greatest roster of all time because it's not, but the legends do help. It does feel like there's a ton of mid carders here though. We do have a few notable characters that didn't make too many game appearances, Muhammad Hassan is here along with the likes of Kenzo Suzuki, Eugene, Paul London and Heidenreich. There are no alternate attires for the superstars, what you see is pretty much what you get, and if there's one thing I would change about Dev Reckoning 2, it would be the roster. More legends would have surely helped, but hey, at least we didn't have to pay for the additional characters, imagine that. There's also a good selection of arenas to choose from, 18 in total once you unlock everything, and the stages and the entranceways all look good, although when I played this on the Dolphin emulator the Minitron videos would sometimes lag a little, but this doesn't happen on original hardware. Still, there's a wide choice here and every single stage setup looks great. Alright, match types we have a few to look at. 
First, you're going to choose between singles, tag, triple threat, four-way, handicap, and Royal Rumble, all self-explanatory. You can then get another few options depending on how many people are involved in the match. So in one-on-one, -on -one, for example, you can have normal matches, hardcore matches, ladder matches, table, TLC, steel cage, hell in a cell, last man standing, the ever-classic brand panties match, and an Iron Man match. It's a good selection, but there's only one new match type here that wasn't in Day of Reckoning 1, and that's the last man standing match. Using weapons in hardcore matches is very satisfying, certain weapons feel like they have a little weight to them, and this makes any weapons based matches fun to play. The Hell in a Cell looks great, as you can see here. You'll see some great ladder bumps in ladder and TLC matches. All this is fairly regular stuff though, and it isn't anything you haven't seen or played before. Where I think Day of Reckoning 2 can get especially fun is in multi-man matches, especially Fatal 4 ways. Because of the way the hit detection works in Day of Reckoning 1 and 2, practically every move can get interrupted. In the Smackdown games, you'd usually have to wait until a move animation completes before you can attack someone. The best example would be the people's elbow, you're standing there waiting for the move to finish before you can go on offense. Well, in Day of Reckoning 2, that people's elbow isn't going to happen if anyone else in the ring doesn't want it to happen. This leads to some seriously chaotic multi-man matches where you gotta pick your spots when performing moves. Tag matches too benefit from this kind of hit detection, and the AI is smart enough to stop its partner from taking finishing moves. So not only can you run in and break up a pin, you can also stop match-ending finishing moves from happening if you're quick enough. The 4-way matches and multi-man matches was where I spent most of my time after completing story mode. Ladder matches in particular can last for ages because guys are bumping into each other and you may think this would be an annoyance, but it really isn't. You can easily put on intense 20 minute matches where anyone could potentially win. It's a whole lot of fun. Get some friends over too and it's even better. You've also got the Royal Rumble match. Only 4 guys in the ring at the same time unfortunately, but it's still good. It's also quite challenging on hard difficulty, so if you want to test yourself, give it a go. And then we have story mode. Once again, you're going to have to create a superstar to compete in story mode. So that means it's the return of Janky Reptile. <laughs> Bet you forgot about this guy. Reptile's going to take on story mode and seeing as the story continues on from Day of Reckoning 1, then it makes sense for us to use him again. I've said this quite a few times, but I suck at creator wrestler and I wouldn't spend much time here, but as expected, you get a little more to play with when creating your superstar and the moves list has been greatly expanded too. Something I noticed though, and I'm not sure if this was prevalent on original hardware, but the load times in between selections felt a bit too long. I don't remember it being this bad, but again, I didn't spend a whole lot of time in creator wrestler mode, so maybe it was, I don't know. You can also listen to theme songs here and you can create your own entrance. I know some of you out there would waste a whole lot of time in these creation modes, so there's a good amount to play with here. As mentioned, Day of Reckoning 1 and Day of Reckoning 2 story modes tie in together. Janky Reptile joined Evolution in Day of Reckoning 1, but he ended up getting screwed over. He faced every member of the faction until eventually beating Triple H at WrestleMania for the world title. In Day of Reckoning 2, you've already lost the title when the game begins, and a controversial match finish between Triple H and Chris Jericho leads to the title getting vacated. Eric Bischoff sets up a tournament, so you've got to qualify and get your title shot. At WrestleMania, some fucking thief steals the championship belt, and rather than just have the match anyway, Eric decides to cancel the WrestleMania main event. Throughout the story mode, you're gonna unravel the mystery and find out who stole the world championship. People are gonna blame you, you're gonna blame Triple H and Ric Flair, and eventually you get fired from Raw and picked up by SmackDown, but it all circles back to the stolen world championship. Stacey Keebler will be your girlfriend in the game because you can't get a girlfriend in real life. She obviously loves some of the jankster, and she'll play a role in the overall story arc too. There's no voice acting here, everything is text based, and it's in story mode where some of the character models can look… Uh, they can look a little weird. When characters talk, their mouths move in really strange ways. It affects some superstars more than others, but it's just a case of remembering how old this game is and trying to overlook the issue, although it can be a little distracting. 
You can rush through story mode in around 12 or 13 hours, but if you want to take your time and put on long matches, then you'll definitely be able to stretch it out a bit. You might as well too, because once story mode's complete, you're going to go straight back to exhibition matches, although you'll also have the points to buy everything from the store. There is a little replay value though, every now and then you can make decisions and branch off onto different paths, but the stories always end up back on the main path a few shows later. It's not like No Mercy where you can drastically alter your career by making decisions. Story mode is good though, there's plenty of callbacks to Day of Reckoning 1 with your character being in evolution, and there's loads of callbacks to the matches you had in the first game, but you can also skip Day of Reckoning 1's story mode and still understand what's going on. I do feel though you'll get a little more out of story mode if you play both games. Some may also dislike the fact that you have to use a created superstar in story mode, I was never a big fan of it either back in the day, but others would prefer it. Either way, it's still a decent single player experience with a rather in-depth story behind it. At the time, Day of Reckoning 2 got average to good reviews, with Metacritic currently holding it at 76%. IGN praised the game for being more strategy based as opposed to the button mashing found in the Smackdown games, while other outlets such as EGM and GamesRadar said it was nothing special in a game suffering from technical issues. I'm not so sure what those technical issues are, but yeah. Reading through critic reviews, you'll notice a pattern. Almost every single one somewhere mentioned Smackdown vs Raw on PlayStation 2, and this was also prevalent among gamers when Day of Reckoning 2 got released. It was the same when DOR 1 got released too. The Smackdown games became the measuring stick for WWE games and rightfully so, it was the biggest seller and the most critically acclaimed so naturally everything else would get compared to it. In saying that, it feels like some of these critics and some gamers back then just didn't want to give Day of Reckoning a chance because it felt too different from what they were used to. The fast paced action found in the Smackdown games was loads of fun, the PS2 WWE games looked good, they played brilliantly, and here comes a WWE game on Nintendo GameCube that's slower, maybe doesn't look as pleasing to the eye, and it's got these vastly different game mechanics that maybe doesn't have that pick up and play quality that the Smackdown games had. It was very very easy to dismiss the Day of Reckoning games and just say fuck it let's play Smackdown instead, and I think that's where the issue lies. With that being said, as time went on it feels like wrestling fans began looking back at Day of Reckoning 1 and 2 and they felt, hey this actually wasn't so bad. The Smackdown games eventually got repetitive, well maybe not repetitive but not a whole lot changed in the way you played the game. Day of Reckoning on the other hand gave fans a completely different way to play out wrestling matches and it's almost like people caught on to the fact years later, maybe because the latest Smackdown games were becoming a little too similar to the ones that came out before. Add in the fact that the PS2 outsold the GameCube in America and Europe, and add in the fact that the PS2 WWE games got off with a great start with Smackdown Just Bring It and Smackdown Shut Your Mouth, whereas the GameCube had a rocky start with WrestleMania 18 and 19. All this considered and you can see why Day of Reckoning 1 and 2 just weren't as successful as other offerings at the time. It's great to see YouTubers who specialise in WWE games give Day of Reckoning 2 a shot though, and most agree it's one of the best wrestling games that they've played. Sure, it's definitely not for everyone either, but it has developed a reputation for being one of the more underappreciated WWE games. I wouldn't say it's obscure, but definitely not highlighted as much as it should be. Getting GameCube games to run on your PC or other devices is so easy these days, there's no reason for you not to give this a shot, especially if you haven't played it before. It may take you a moment to adjust to the control scheme, but a few matches in and you'll be good. Maybe one day I'll play through story mode in Dev Reckoning 1 and 2 and upload it to YouTube. If that's something you'd want to see, then let me know. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and take care. Thanks again guys for watching another wrestling bios video and I hope you've been enjoying the videos that I've been uploading on the channel recently. I've got a couple of Patreon Hall of Famers to shout out today, we've got Richard Swan, Luis Flores and Number 16 Edge Fan. You can find Number 16 Edge Fan on Twitter at SNWExpert. Thanks to these Hall of Famers and thanks to everyone who supports on the Patreon page.